Okay, so Misfits Cruiserweight Division. Previous champion or, or current champion, I should say, well, kind of a bit of both. The current champion is one KSI. Um, he, he's held the cruiserweight belt uh, since his uh, defeat over. I don't even know. I guess it might have been in the Swarms one. At least uh, that they might have crowned him then. Uh, if not, it would have been in the Temper fight. So he's held it for a good couple of years. Um, arguably, he lost it to the um, in the Prime Guard to Tommy Fury, but that was not really mentioned after the after the win. Because again, I guess he can't really give Tommy Fury an influenza belt. Um, so he's held the belt for the past couple of years in the cruiserweight division. Um, and then over the weekend, he has relinquished it. He has said, "Nope, I don't want to fight for the belt. Um, I'm not willing to. Not that he's not willing, but he wasn't going to fight any challenges for the belt." So he's relinquished it. Uh, the reason for that is most likely so we can go and fight someone um, who's not already a part of the Misfits scene. People are saying like a Mike Perry or a, a Jorge Masvidal is, is expected to be his next opponent. Maybe a McGregor, highly doubt it. Um, but uh, uh, a Mike Perry or, or Masvidal is most likely. Um, so that's, it makes sense for him then to relinquish the belt to, to do that. So my thought is then, you know, who's next for, who's next in line for, for, the, for the crown? So I've decided to go through and I looked at uh, all the fighters that have fought in the cruiserweight and have looked at their stats and I've ranked them 1 to 10 to, to see, you know, who, in my opinion, is, is number one challenger uh, all the way down to number 10. Um, I'm going to go in my next video I'm going to make, I'm going to go into a bit more detail about how I think they should uh, style a, like a tournament style uh, champion for um, championship for the belt. Um, but that's going to come out in a couple of days time, maybe even tomorrow, depending on what time I upload this. So if that's something you'd like to see, uh, please uh, subscribe and uh, hopefully you'll see that in a couple of days. So for me, there's a bit of an issue with the cruiserweight division. At the beginning of Misfits, the majority of the bigger fighters fought in cruiserweight. So Salt Papi, Anthony Taylor, uh, Kenny, Temper, people like that, uh, Ashley Raksu, they all fought in the cruiserweight division at, at, the, at the dawn of Misfits. But since Misfits has been going on, people have been taking the training more serious. 99% of those fighters have dropped down to the light heavyweight. Like, I'm, I'm looking at my notes. Kenny originally starts uh, fighting at 180. He's now fighting in the low 170s in, in light heavyweight. So the majority of the cruiserweight fight, fighters are now in light heavyweight. But they can always come back up. So the way I've done this is that I've, I'm looking at fighters' um, win-loss ratio when they're fighting at cruiserweight so i've got some fighters here that have uh one win in cruiserweight maybe like a couple losses in like he like heavyweight but i'm not counting those losses because they're in a different weight class because i'm just counting the fights that are in cruiserweight okay so i'm going to go from 10 to 1 i'm just going to try and get these as quickly as possible uh who i think is in my top 10 and then in a later video i'm going to say about you know how i would seed them and how i'd have them fight in like a championship in like a tournament style a bit like kingpin for the cruiserweight belt okay coming in at number 10 is is one swarms uh he fought uh originally at 199 against ksi in the original fight and he's fought in the cruiserweight as low as 184. um one thing i should have mentioned the cruiserweight weight is a bit weird so Mams put out on Twitter, or it might even be the Misfits Boxing Twitter page, put out on Twitter, uh, put out on Twitter in August to October time, uh, an image with their Misfit weight divisions, in which they said that, uh, I'm looking at my notes, they said that Misfits Cruiserweight is at 190 to 205. That's what they've put. In mainstream professional boxing, it's 175 to 200. So if you're going based off what Misfits says, 190 to 205, Outside of Le'Veon Bell, JMX, and I guess Swarms, because he was 199, no one else has fought at that weight. KSI have only ever fought between 175 and 181 in the cruiserweight division. So for them to say cruiserweight is 190 above is, is a bit stupid. That made no sense. I don't know if they've gone, gone back on that. But anyway, I'm basing it off of 175 to 200. So number 10, Swarms fought between 184 and 199 had one win and one loss win against ryan taylor lost against ksi so i've ranked him at number 10. ginty uh fought between uh, 189 and 195 one win two losses he comes at number nine uh a new entry at number eight 
Tristan Han. So he has one win, zero losses. He won his debut fight against not Logan Paul. I've put him above Gintian Swarms based on his performance in that fight. Admittedly, not Logan Paul. Um, he had an okay showing, um, but he obviously wasn't a, an, a high level uh, fighter like some of the other fighters on this list. But he did have fighting history, so he wasn't. He, he knew what he was doing in there, and Tristan just completely uh, overpowered him. So I think Tristan is, is definitely a contender in this series. Um, so I put him in at number eight because um, I think he would and could beat Gintian Swarms. Coming at number seven is probably my most controversial uh, person because they're quite low down in comparison to what I imagine a lot of people's lists are, and that's Kenny. I have Kenny as far down as seven. The reason for this is that. Kenny's last fight at Cruiserweight, he's fought between 177 and 180 in the Cruiserweight division. His last fight at the Cruiserweight division was against Ashley Raksu, and he lost. So for me, it's a bit of a spoiler, Ashley's a bit up the list. He's actually, to me, if it's a, 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 a seeded um, weight class, kind of like in the UFC, if you beat Cole, say Kenny was the number four and Raksu was number eight, if you beat him, you go above him or you go further up. So Raksu for me beat Kenny will definitely beat Kenny. So I have rated Kenny at, at, at number seven because he's only got he's got two wins but one loss, and for me that loss has, has pushed him down in comparison to the other fighters. So let me know what you think of that. A lot of people are probably going to think that's stupid. Uh, at number six, I have JMX with uh, one win, one loss. Uh, he's coming in between one ninety four and one ninety five. Um, so his two fights were his Ginty and Le'Veon Bell. Um, so he, I think that kind of makes sense, him being in the middle um, with one one fight, or two fights, one win, one loss. Um, his win obviously was, was, was a knockout. And again, his opponent that he beat is lower down the list at nine because he, he got beat. And his, his opponent who beat him, Le'Veon Bell, is higher up the list. I know I'm reiterating myself, but it's just a lot of people might not follow me. Um, so... At number five, I have Raksu with one win, one loss. So Raksu, for me, because he beat Kenny, it pushes him up. And because he lost, again, spoiler, he lost to someone further up this list, you know, he's fought someone that's in the top three. So he deserves to be up there because he, he fought him. Um, he didn't win, but, you know, that, that fight was, was a fight that's happened. So Raksu is at number five. Um, Phase Temper in at number four. He's fought between 176 um, and most recently against Ginty. He fought at 190. He had two wins, one loss. Same as Kenny, but he's won his last fight. That for me is enough to put him above Kenny because he won his last fight. Um, there's another fighter here that's two and one, but is higher. Um, I'll get to him in a second. Uh, number three is Le'Veon. He fought at 194. Um, Deserves to be there. He beat JMX pretty convincingly. Um, so JMX is supposed to be one of the better fighters. Le'Veon beat him pretty handedly. He deserves to be at, at number three. Number two, uh, Salt Pappy. So he fought at 180 consistently across three fights. Won two, lost one against Anthony Taylor. So the two he won was that was Andy Worski and Josh Bruckner, so he beat them. So that put him quite high up the cruiserweight rankings until uh, Anthony Taylor beat him, um, which kind of goes into who my number one contender for the cruiserweight belt is, and that is indeed one Anthony Taylor who fought between uh, 180 and 184 with a 2-0 record. So he's got the best record in the cruiserweight division. Uh, he's fought uh, the best, the, the second best guy who was Salt Papi and beat him, and he fought uh, the number five guy, Ashirak Suit, and beat him as well. So it makes sense him being in that number one spot. So again, in my next video, I'm going to go into a bit more details how they could do a challenger tournament series to, to crown the Cruiserweight champion. But let me know what you think. If you completely agree with me or completely disagree with me, let me know if you're anywhere in between. Uh, leave a like. And as always, please subscribe uh, for any more videos like this. I'm doing a video a day in February. And I'd really appreciate all the support that goes into this. Um, yeah, I'm trying to, just trying to see what I can do in a month. So yeah, thank you for watching. Bit of a longer video. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time.